Hello everybody and welcome back to Imperator where we are currently starting a brand new mega campaign. It's always fun when we're going to do this until we get to the end game of it, but you know, it's fine. I like to have at least one mega campaign going at any time because I just, I really like doing mega campaigns. I realize they can be kind of hard to keep up with because they are so long, but I mean... I enjoy them. So here we are. We're going to be diving straight on in to a new game here, and we are going to be playing starting as Judea, and that is going to be, I think, a very interesting start. I took a bit of a look at what we've got going on here, and we're going to be kind of sandwiched between two great powers. We're going to have to play some diplomacy here at the beginning, I think. We'll see how this ends up going. It'll be interesting for sure. So as soon as the game gets loaded up here, we will hop straight on in. We already know what we want to be playing as, and it should be uh, <laughs> very interesting indeed. So we're going to be starting in the Holy Land, which of course means in Crusader Kings, we're probably going to be the target of a bunch of Crusades and stuff. But we're going to be, like, importing over, and it'll be absolutely fine in theory. Oh, by the way, we are still playing with Terran Domita, so that is a thing. But we're not going to be playing in the east over here. We're going to be playing all the way over here. Excellent. So this is the guy we're going to be playing as, Judean Heritage. So we get bonus to fort de defense, minus 30% pop conversion speed. Ooh, okay. But plus 10% religious tech investment. So we're going to have to offset that for sure. We'll be a theocratic monarchy. Our religion will be Israelite. Unintegrated culture group happiness, minus 15. But pop assimilation speed, plus 15. So that's not bad. That is not bad at all. And of course, our culture will be Hebrew, giving us a bonus to archers and light infantry. Gross. Okay. Actually, that's just going to be our, uh, our levy setup. Sure. So that seems fine. We'll go ahead and start this. And I'm wondering what the situation is with Samaria over here. So let's get this properly started. Game is currently frozen, but there we go. Here is Terra Indomita. Yes, it is uh, time to conquer the world. Indeed. Judea was until recently a province of the Persian Achaemenid Empire, though nominally independent and ruled by Jewish governors. After the conquest of Alexander the Great a few decades ago, Judea has fallen under the rule of the Hellenistic empires. The country once again sits in a perilous position, with Alexander's generals jostling for supremacy over parts of his empire. Indeed. It'll be very, uh, <laughs> very interesting. Time to make history. So, we've got Nabatea down here. We've got the Ptolemaic Kingdom over here and the Antigonid Kingdom up over this way. It is 450 or 304 BCE. This is uh, 450 AUC. Right. That, that's the way that that works. Now, my question is, what's going on with Samaria? So let's take a quick peek at this. They're a tributary of the Antigonid Kingdom. Are we also a tributary of the Antigonid Kingdom? It would probably be easiest to see going in here. We are. We're a tributary of the Antigonid Kingdom. So the Ptolemaic Kingdom might try to do something to us. Understood. So I'm wondering about these guys. Okay. And if we were to declare this, we can't start a war before 1 November, but if we were to declare this, would they defend tributaries from other tributaries? Maybe. Maybe. Regardless, this is what we're starting with, and uh, it's, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> we're going to have a long ways to go. We can get some new inventions here, and we're not going to be beating either of these great powers militarily anytime soon until they run into some problems. So we may want to consider going pretty heavily into things like economy or religion. Integrated and unintegrated culture group happiness would be fine, but I think what we really want to start going into is thinking very defensively for right now and just trying to survive until we get a better opportunity than what we have at this moment. Now, we might want to consider coming down and conquering some territory from these guys. 
I'm not sure they're at 102 pops compared to us who are currently at 124 pops. So we can probably take them. We can probably take them. We can also call down some omens. So minus 5% aggressive expansion impact. We've got this Mithraic Deity of War, which is remarkable. Huh. Because we shouldn't have any deities other than the one. We are monotheistic at this time. But okay, we've got these prophets down here, and that all seems reasonably fine for now. Presumably these prophets are going to die periodically. This is just a free province investment. Interesting. Unintegrated culture group happiness plus 5.29%. Five pops would assimilate from calling on Esther. That is very interesting, actually. I don't know that we have much for unintegrated culture as of right now. Uh, let's see here. This is 100% Levantine. This is... Or actually... Yeah, this is, this is Levantine here, which is apparently accepted. Hebrew is 95%, and we are able to assimilate over some pops. So maybe we should call down Esther here. I want to check what these others do. This would actually give us two pops. That's really powerful. We're calling on David. Okay, so that looks good. That's going to give us some national tax as well. So that's fine. Our ruler is currently unmarried. We should probably arrange a marriage here. And it doesn't really matter who we marry at this point. Splendid. Let us arrange the festivities. That'll be fine. And we have some free idea slots. So what do we want for our military idea? Morale of armies is pretty decent. And I think that's what we'll take. And then for our civic idea slot, well, actually, these are both religious idea slots. Okay. So, country civilization level and monthly civilization change is not terrible. Integration speed, it's not terrible. Monthly ruler popularity gain, I think we're going to go definitely with the civilization. And then the other options here are kind of mediocre. We'll go for, like, integration speed, I guess. So, something like that should do the trick for right now. Now, we can't form Israel right now. We would need all of that to form Israel. But for the time being, we're not going to be taking anything from the Antigonid Kingdom. That is not going to be happening. They've got 23, 43 pops, and they're a major power. It's, it's not going to be a thing. So we have four innovations to start with. I think for the moment, grabbing a few martial innovations is not necessarily the worst thing. Getting down to cohorts would be reasonable, but I don't think we're not... I, I don't think we're in a good position for that. What do we have for levies? I mean, that doesn't seem great, to be honest. We'll check to see if the Antigonids would maybe help us with this. I don't think they would, but it would definitely be interesting. I think for the moment, we should probably go... We should probably go economic. So that means that I want to be going for things that are going to give us pops long term. So that means under religious advances, going for things like, well, grain rations, obstetrics, bread stamp, things like that. Encouragement of migration. Anything that gives us that national population growth. So I think for now, that means we grab due process and we grab FUG and then reduce governorship into probably Libertini for right now. And then from there, we'd go down to state burials, stoicism, encouragement of migration, and then we'd pivot up to herbalism, grain rations, writings of Mago, and probably threshing board before heading over towards mass pewter production and bread stamp. And then grabbing alumen, recording tradition, obstetrics, and just looking to get as much population as we can would be the overall idea here. So that all seems reasonably fine. Now we're making an okay amount of money. I do want to turn on accept all traits. So that'll be fine for now. We can also pick a character focus. And... Civic focus is pretty good, we know that for a fact, because we would get some national population growth here, which would be good. But then, more importantly, we could get a free forum? Okay. 
noted. Uh, what was it? Was it zeal focus? There was one that gave us... Well, we're, we're a monarchy, so it, it's not going to be... We're not going to be able to break it like we did with the previous one and get, like, ridiculous amounts of free, free province investments. So that's not going to be a thing. We're probably just going to go for civic investments here. This population growth is very good, and it doesn't really matter which of these we end up grabbing, although... I think we're probably going to look to go for, like, the finesse. And that'll be fine for now. Okay, so we've got some disloyal characters here. Herkanos and Osai. Okay, sure. But for the moment, this looks absolutely fine. So let's bump this up to speed four, and let's tick forward a little bit here. But let's go into the macro builder, and let's see. Colonias would be fine, I suppose. There are no farming settlements, no mines to be built, and presumably also no enclosures. And that is indeed accurate. I want to check through some of these areas and see... Yeah, we don't have building slots here. So we're going to have a lack of materials for sure. We have to expand. Okay, well, let's tick forward until 1 November. And then we can take a look at what potential expansion opportunities would include. I would like to attack Samaria first. I don't know if that's going to be viable because I don't know if the Antigonid Kingdom would defend them from their own tributary. So, ah, we can't even declare war as a tributary. Okay, never mind that. Okay. So we need to break free from the Antigonid Kingdom, but we need to be powerful enough to stand on our own when we do so. Yeah, that's not going to go well. We're obviously not going to do that. So, to that end, this is going to be a bit of a slow start. Okay. Well, that is fine. We can definitely work with that. And we can build a logging camp. So I guess that's something. Oh, we can build a farming settlement. We just didn't have the gold. Okay, so we can build farming settlements. We can build logging camps. Let's get started on a farming settlement here. Beautiful. This is going to be a slow start. That's okay. It's not hugely shocking. This is a mega campaign, so we're really not in a hurry. That sounds good. Let's get that farming settlement going, and we're going to make the whatever money we can. Now, I want to check in on our research here. This is our culture. Uh, what's the research button again? I always forget. It's this one. Okay. So that's fine. How far away are we here? 20, we're 20 years ahead of time already in tech here. Okay. That's noted. Ahead of time in this game is very weird. And our research efficiency is not fantastic. So we should probably make one of our... our do we only have three cities here? Yes, we have three cities. We have this one, Emma Ohm, which I'm imagining I did not pronounce correctly. We've got Yeriho, and we've got, of course, Jerusalem. Okay, that sounds good. So, we need to decide one of these. Uh, what do we want here? Uh, sure, I don't want a rival. This is fine for now. We need to decide one of these to be a research city. One of them Possibly this one should be a slave city. Hmm. Yeah, that might not be a bad idea. So research city, a slave city, and then the other type of city that we would want would be a manpower city. So we can kind of make one of each. So we could have the wood city be a manpower city. That seems reasonably fine. That will be fairly expensive to get going, and I want to get all of these rural constructions done first. That's going to be the best way, probably, to get our economy rolling, and that is good. So we're paying 0.57 in tribute right now. That's understood. So now that we understand our diplomatic situation here, we're basically part of the Antigonid Kingdom, and we're going to need to break free eventually. We can't do independent diplomacy, I don't think we can even come down to these guys and be like, so I want to make friends with you. I mean, we can make friends with the uh, with the ruler, but I'm talking about the actual 
nation here. Can we even influence them? We would have to be a... We could beseech a new overlord, huh? Interesting. We would have to be a disloyal subject. And right now, we're a loyal subject. So that is noted. For the moment, I'm okay with being a loyal subject, though, because we want to just invest in getting ourselves more powerful. As I said, this is going to be a slow start. And we're going to need to get a lot of gold. So how can we go about getting more gold? Honestly, we could do things like strong arming and such, but that doesn't make us much gold right now. Indeed, it doesn't. Only 22.85. So that is certainly noted. I think for the moment, we just slowly snowball. I think that's the way that this is going to go. So that's fine. We're going to have to play this the long game and play very patiently. That's fine. Absolutely A-OK. -okay. Cool. So this is definitely a very slow start. No doubt about that. We're going to be able to... This is earthenware here, despite the fact that we can see farmland here. That's interesting. This is plains. Huh. Okay. Sure. Well, that seems absolutely fine for right now. This down here is floodplain, presumably. I'm guessing that's why that farmland is there, because of the floodplain. But whatever, that's okay. So we're about halfway done with this farming settlement. We see an aqueduct going in in Samaria. Okay. That is fine. But these rural structures are going to be very expensive. There's no doubt about that. The urban structures are cheaper, by and large. There are a few that are not, but they are broadly cheaper. There are some people supporting a pretender. Okay. What is our current manpower, manpower cap? We are at our cap, but there's not really anything we can do about that. We can't fight anybody, and raising our levies would be kind of pointless. So <laughs> there's not really anything to do about that right now. We can't recruit because we don't have access to cohorts, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, we don't have the right laws. So we can start working on changing over our laws. So this is what we're on right now. We're on agnatic primogeniture. I don't really care about that. That seems fine. None of these other laws down here are changeable at the current moment. So yeah, we can't raise any legions at this moment. And we would need to get down to like royal guard. We would need to have regional power status to do that. And we're currently playing as a local power, so we're going to need to boost up our power levels. So we're just kind of waiting for something bad to happen to the Antigonid Kingdom to give us an opportunity to break free from them. And then we hope that the Ptolemaic Kingdom doesn't immediately swoop in. <laughs> that would be problematic. So we would like to keep the relations with the Ptolemaic Kingdom very, very high. Do we want to spend gold on that? Probably not right now. But once we start looking to break free from the Antigonid Kingdom, we need to either not be scared of the Ptolemaic, or we need to boost up their opinion with us. So that is definitely a thing. What is going on here? Are they at war? They're at war with Macedon. They are. They are at war up over here. Okay. That is noted. We do not appear to be involved in this war. We'll keep an eye on it, and if it looks like we can probably sneak in an independence, we might grab that. The main issue, of course, is we're going to need to be friends with the Ptolemaic Kingdom, and there we can see the Antigone Kingdom heading southward, and they're going to fight down over here. For the moment, I don't think we should make any moves. We'll keep an eye on it, and if, if the Antigone Kingdom is six, significantly weakened from this war, we might be able to pull something off. But for the moment, I'm much, much more concerned about getting our economy online. And it's going to be slow going, no doubt about it. We do have a fortress down over here, and we should actually probably turn down our fort maintenance. That will be a good thing here. Do we want to leave the priests alone? Three free stability and some loyalty. This is just good. We're going to take that. And we're going to drop our fort maintenance down. That'll save us 0.06 per month. That's not a lot, but it will be a useful thing to do. 
Okay, so that looks fine for now. We're definitely going to have a lot of work ahead of ourselves. There's no doubt about that. This is going to be a lot of work. So we can see that the Antigonid Kingdom lost a battle down here. That's noted. Their mill tech is currently two. Sure. What is our mill tech? One. <laughs> Fair enough. Okay. Yeah, we've got a long ways to go at this point. We expect to be finishing in 479. Yeah, that's a ways out. We should definitely start getting that research city going. And I am currently thinking... Yeah, they're actually changing their borders. Interesting. They definitely raised this city. We have nothing to do with that war. They're not going to invade us. But yeah. The Ptolemaic Kingdom is definitely winning down over here. Well, I wish them luck in that endeavor. For the time being, we're just hoping that we don't get brought into this war. As tributaries, I don't think we can be. The Ptolemaic Kingdom is definitely doing a lot of raising out over here. They're getting aggressive expansion for it, too. And, of course, they're also getting war exhaustion. Or is that war exhaustion going to the Antigonids? I'm not sure. But there's a lot of raising going on over here. We just finished up our farming settlement here, and that is, of course, great. That is going to reduce the slaves needed for local surplus here, but we're going to need our pop cap to grow here quite a lot. So that is going to take some time. We are working towards getting our population up, but yeah, we can see that the Ptolemaic Kingdom is absolutely pushing up this way. We'll see if they get pushed back. Oh my. Oh my. That is not going well for the Antigonids. Okay. A heresy? Very rude. This is going very poorly, in fact, for the Antigonids. I am wondering, as a hypothetical right now, if we were to come in here and we were to do Independence of Judea, we would lose 10 stability because we have good relations, and we would be against all of this. I still don't think it's a good idea. But I'm definitely watching a lot of things happening here. If the Antigonid Kingdom were to cease to exist, we wouldn't have to fight at all. We would just be independent, I would think. I don't think they're going to cease to exist, but they are definitely taking huge losses to both the Ptolemaic Kingdom and the Seleucid Empire. Are they hostile to each other? I think they are. I think all of the Alexandrian successor states are fighting each other here. Maybe? Hmm. I don't know. We'll keep an eye on it. It's definitely interesting. There's a lot going on up here, but we don't really have much to do with it right now. We're just chilling. We're just minding our own business. So the Seleucid Empire has completely cut off the Ptolemaic Kingdom at this point. And we'll see what that ends up looking like. But yeah, that uh, that's not looking so great for the Antigonids. I like it. That is good for us, to be clear. If they lose this hard, then that is definitely good for us. Disagreement on the highest level, huh? Uh, we can tell them to stop bickering, but I'm going to side with the guy with the lower loyalty for right now. That seems okay. So we see the Ptolemaic army heading back this way. There's still some territory that they could take out over here. Not sure what their deal is on that one. But okay. As long as we're not involved... I'm happy. So that sounds good for now. So I am interested in continuing to construct. We could start building some research in our capital here. Let's see. We can't build noble districts yet because those are quite expensive. We know that we would want to build citizen districts as well. 
But ultimately, we would want to build, well, libraries are kind of what we would use to fill it out, right? We would want to build court of laws to get citizen desired ratio. We would want to build academies to get noble desired ratio. All of these are quite expensive to build. So at this point, I think there's not really much point in it. The Antigonid Kingdom is definitely having some problems. No doubt about that. And I'm wondering what the Ptolemaic Kingdom is thinking about this right now. They would accept beseeching new overlord, but we can't do this because we're not disloyal. So how do we make ourselves be disloyal? That's an interesting question. How do we lose loyalty? So cancel tribute. We could refuse to stop paying the tribute. Which we might end up doing, depending on how this war ends up going. But I don't think that's going to give us independence. That'll just give us that 0.96 per month. Which would be very nice to have, I'm not going to lie. But that will give them a CB, and I mean, if they are pushed out this far by the end of this war, after peace is reached, we'll probably refuse to pay them. I don't see any reason why we wouldn't. But it is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, maybe we'll get to take another action. That would be nice. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings. And a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible. Including ALS Gamer, Atala, Ali Lee, Dark Horse, Xenocyte, Upper Cumberland Gamers, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, The Lounge STL, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video. And as always, I will see you all next time.